Alright everybody and welcome back to Karatha's channel. Today I'm going to be covering a new topic which is the feedback for devs and hopefully in this it'll cover all of the suggestions, quality of life features, and uh, additional changes that players have been asking for for a couple of months now and so hopefully this will help to get some awareness and a little bit more detail into what types of changes and things um, I guess we as long-term players are looking for and hopefully they'll help impact uh, the short term both the community and the overall growth and um, I guess continued prospects of eternal evolution so with that all said let's go ahead and get started here first I'm going to show all of the different types of changes that I um, thought would be good to mention in this video and I'm just gonna go through one by one and cover all of the different types of tabs uh, I guess the sub tabs uh, what their priority level is this is based mostly on uh, what players have been saying so the frequency of mention and use and I guess how much of an impact it'll have and then these are just some quick notes for myself um, and for other people to see here as we go ahead and get through this so I guess very first thing right here is this checkbox right here is uh yeah it's very very small on mobile devices and so oftentimes I have to log in two or three times a day before I finally uh, manage to go through and click all of these checkboxes so first thing is increase the size of this checkbox like make it like this big or something like that like make it make it huge so I don't have to ever see this again it's, uh, it's quite annoying uh, <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so we're going to start off with the things that are the the highest priority, and that is the hero equipment tab. This is probably the most talked about tab uh, in the en entirety of the Discord server. Is all of these fifty bajillion pieces of gear that we have here that we no longer need, um, that we no longer want, and is, that is a pain um, to manage. So in it, you have all of these types of things, and you can kind of filter by it. So if I filter by the types of stats that most of the cookie cutter builds are going to do, it's going to be by these stats. You're going to have uh, attack, uh, main stat, and then you're going to have like crit rate, crit damage. Is is a very common piece. But if you look through all of that gear I went through earlier, uh, this is the only piece that was found. And so I go through here, like this is the only piece pieces that are found, and this. Right here, these are the only pieces that are found. So if I remove everything and I look at um, all of the types of gear that is like, there is quite a bit of useless gear in here uh, that cannot be used for that specific type. Now, you will run a couple of things you want, usually attack, DR, or those kinds of things, but for players to not be able to manage that is very, very difficult. And so you could look through the gear tab is completely full this is a huge issue just because the UI UX management for this is very difficult so increasing the cap for that would be a short-term fix but if you go through and look through the mail as well I I've been going through every single day and trying to clear as many of these as possible but um, I'm at to the point where I could only go three or four of these messages at a time um, while going through the thing so there are quite a few different ways um, that I guess can be made towards changing this and that is to include um, uh, different kinds of auto filters different kinds of sorting things through this equipment tab right here so just add a couple of filters on the top and say like um, like equipment that have uh, like EX attack EX defense and EX HP on them mark it as junk or something like that like an ability to mark equipment as junk I think would be absolutely huge for players um, the other thing is the ability to automatically increase all equipment um, to level 4 that would be another huge uh, quality of life feature because then we could do everything to level 4 then we could do with the filter by whatever your filter settings are mark as junk and that would you know that would take maybe 15 seconds or so to do uh, for each type of filter setting you you put in but that would filter out hundreds and hundreds of these then another thing would be in an auto lock of certain types of filters so if I want something like attack main stat with crit damage and crit rate 
um, then that would be a filter setting. I could say, okay, if I have that, mark like lock it or something like that. Like that would be a huge help uh, to players. Just any kind of filter options for that um, is, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we're looking for right here. So um, next I will talk about is the commander limit. So that's pretty similar here. Uh, you go through here and, you know, your commanders are full. And then you could kind of sort it as well. Um, but then the, one of the issues is when I'm upgrading hero, and this is how I usually do it. I do 8, and then I find a level 10 commander that isn't locked, and then I go through and I do it. But the issue is for, like, these SSS commanders, the lock icon is sitting here uh, hidden behind this SSS symbol. And so I can't actually uh, select it. And so, like, it's, it's very difficult for players to be able to uh, bypass that. So making the lock icon not only larger, but also um, making it available behind these SSS commanders. The other thing is every time I upgrade any sort of gear, or I evolve a hero, or I um, upgrade a commander, it scrolls me to the very top of the page. Please allow the position to remain static here, so I don't have to scroll down to the very bottom, upgrade this commander, and then it takes me to the very top every single time. Just please allow it to stay static in one spot. Um, yeah, that's a very high priority as well. Uh, for players. So next I'm going to go through the mission tab. When I do um, collect all, I'm very glad you guys added that collect all button, but please have a second collect all button to automatically collect these. This is a minor thing, but it's just a huge annoyance to have to deal with every day. So um, we'll go through and go to the bag. So for the items tab, there needs to be another tab here that is for all of the consumable items. So these types of items here, um, your cards, your types of resource packs, anything that is consumable, put another tab first and say consumable items. These are very, like static items, items that you will use over time or that just sit there um, and eventually you'll have a use for, but it isn't a need to be seen, I guess, at first. The only thing would be for these types of things. Uh, a second thing for this tab is I would prefer similar types of uh, items to be grouped together. So all of the runes have it sort, so it's rune, 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 and not how it is here, red, yellow, purple, blue. Uh, to me, that just makes more sense, or at least put an option in order to do that. Um, and it's the same thing with you. You have like the various types of resource packs. You have whatever eight hour, four hour, like two hour or whatever, like put all of the same types of packs uh, together. Um, we already talked about the resource tab. The shards tab doesn't really need much changing. Um, I guess like grouping wise, like, yeah, there isn't really much that could be done there. But this prototypes tab, this has been talked about since the like even before in soft launch like I have quite a few prototypes and I'm not a very long player uh, like a long-term player as some of the soft launch players but add some sort of way in which players can either convert these into shards so say I have like a hundred of these blue or like 20 of these blue equal one of these uh, like purples and then 20 of these equal like one of these and then like 20 of these equals one red or something like that and any sort of conversion to either currencies or to a higher tier form any sort of conversion here is going to be um, a very high priority for players um, in the smelting thing uh, yeah there's a lot the current the current status is okay if you use the filters um, when you are um, going through things. So for example, I don't want anything with main stats right here. I don't want anything with a resist main stat. So if I look at, uh, these are the only types of items that pop up, but you saw through my bag, my inventory, like these are the only types of gear that I would use for smelting. Uh, another change that I would like to request or bring awareness to is that when you are uh, selecting gear, so the two piece sets, this has changed now, but these two piece sets can only be used for other two piece sets, but these um, like four piece sets can't be interused. So if I'm selecting gluttony set, and let me just remove some of these. Um, all right, so here's all of my pieces. I can't use these types of items, and then if I switch to a roulette of truth, 
it won't allow me to use those types of items uh, for each of the other four piece sets. So being able to use these different types of four piece sets for all of the other four piece sets when smelting would be a huge quality of life update change. All right, next let's go back to here and we're just gonna go through all of these tabs. So Guild Hall, um, this is fairly high priority items in here, um, but when you're looking at like player profiles, for example, like to be able to click on a person's gear um, and see what all the player has equipped, like that is a huge thing, especially when you have somebody applying to your guild, uh, you want to be able to see certain things about them. So on the player profile, you should include information such as, you know, highest story stage, um, like, uh, I don't know, like any, any sort of other items like uh, story stage, elite campaign, uh, should should pop up on the, in, the, in the application process um, like uh, being able to check out their roster as well like these five player like this is this is okay information but like it's it's not really needed like who cares what their last team was I'd rather see more about the, the prospective player itself and uh, that'll really help with just uh, being able for new players in general to see how to gear type of characters because that's a huge question it's one of the biggest questions new players have in the discord and in game is oh how do i gear this character how do i gear this character you have to have entire guides dedicated to this because of the lack of information in game on this thing when searching for guilds um there needs to be more information displayed uh, level is okay members is okay total activity is okay but you need to have different types of filters such as language whether or not you're an english guild or I don't know if we have any like a Spanish guild or something like that. Um, also, uh, activity is a very low indicator of like progress. I'd rather it show uh, by weekly activity. So like have weekly activity be a higher priority or have the ability to also show uh, the highest completed uh, guild hunt because that is a major factor in determining a guild. You want a guild that is able to complete and do higher level um, bosses in guild hunt. So being able to have filter options for that is uh, very, very good. So now it says you could search by guild name, but for example, if I type in exquisite like so, and I search by it, it can't find my guild, even though it's right here, because it's case sensitive. So if you have a guild that uses special characters or such, that guild will never be able to be found. So the only way to find that guild is to you type in this UID number or this ID number for the guild, which is a huge pain as well. So please, you don't need that. Just add filter options, include additional and actual useful information for that. Um, yeah, it'd be nice to see here, uh, like, like combat power growth from like last week to current week. So you could like click a toggle filter and you could see like, oh, on this week from compared to last week, uh, you gained like 1 million power or something like that. Or your activity last week was uh, like 200 or 300 or 400, whatever it is, just to be able to see whether or not players uh, have you know, changed from week to week uh, on a week to week basis. Uh, yeah, that's it for this tab. For the daily challenge, uh, yeah, this is a pain. These rewards are so minor, and it just fills up, uh, like, space. Instead of it giving gear, I would just rather it give, uh, metalize, just the actual currency. We don't need additional fodder gear at this point. Um, nobody's ever going to use this, this type of gear. When you're challenging it, whatever your highest, uh, damage, uh, dealt is, there should be a, just an auto sweep function. So say you've done guild hunt, um, I don't know, 20 or 40 times or something like that, 50 times, I'll change it after that point to be an auto complete based on your highest uh, damage dealt. Um, and that would be a, a huge change there for that. Uh, for guild hunt itself, there is a lot of things. So players wish for more achievements here or for it to be reset or something. Uh, I'm fine with this not being reset, but just note that lots of players have to, that this get reset, maybe on like a monthly basis or that after like the first month, then that the rewards are given, um, that is lesser rewards um, or something, like any sort of progress on that. Uh, like this this challenge thing, this is, this is too large for 
the amount of information it needs to be halved. So have like two columns or three columns or something here. Um, when you you as a person in the guild leadership, there needs to be some way to see past guild hunts. So whether or not um, you know players have participated, uh, whether or not players have done uh, like actual damage, like what types of hits, at least keep the previous week's damage. It would be very good if there was a small history overcap for at least the past month. So say like uh, on this, whatever, on this week, you did two two guild challenges you know boss reached this percent boss reached this percent like just being able to see that so players could see the progress of their guild hunt uh, changes over time uh, that would be a huge quality of life change um yeah so that's it for the guild itself that's most of the important information so i'm going to cover the shops now uh so most of the shops have useless inf uh useless items in them now so for players, generally, you want the Rubelite, um, and then you'll refresh, and then whatever, Rubelite again, you'll refresh, and these red runes right here. So these runes are probably the most important thing. Uh, these 8-hour gold is okay. Uh, and everything else, like nobody is going to pay this amount for one piece of gear that is random. Um, that is not going to, you know, it's it's not going to be anything significant because it's complete RNG on it. So, you know, probably 99% of the time this is just going to be a waste of diamonds. So same for these, like you no longer need like fodder cards and stuff like that for this types of cost. So, yeah, most of the equipment is going to follow the same thing where the types of uh, items you're going to buy in the shop are just going to be like one or two items per shop. So in the Wasteland shop, for example, Players are going to choose these elite heroes for the first uh, maybe two, maybe three months, and then after that, they're no longer going to be needed. So either put these types of heroes on a rotation, so you have like two sets of three or something like that, or so every reset period, it's a different set of heroes. That, that I think, will help players, um, I guess, flesh out their rosters a little bit more towards the characters they're missing, especially as a free-to-play player. However, I will add the caveat that you don't uh, don't add the rotation of these heroes until after the, the first five weeks. That way it's something consistent for new players uh, so they can choose whatever they need um, from the, the selected uh, heroes here. And then after that, then um, same, and then, uh, you know, add the hero rotation. Bleh. All right, so for the dismissal shop, I'm at the point where I no longer need any sort of fodder whatsoever. So, I, I, I have no idea what you would put in here, but pretty much anything is going to be better than just more useless shards and stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. You'll have to decide on that. Uh, for the gear shop, um, literally, I'm just, you know, I have 500k coins now almost, and I'm just waiting for immortal gear because uh, there's a very brief time um, after you get uh, the legendary gear sets. Uh, unlocked for the first time which i think is what 20 it's like 20 chapter completing chapter 24 in story or something like that uh, is when you unlock it but after that you only need it for the first like two or three weeks and then afterwards it's, it's the same thing like one piece of gear with a 99 percent chance that it's going to be useless isn't really helpful um what would be helpful if if it, the cost of it was much more like two or three times more but you could select uh, at least one specific set one specific sat ah oh my gosh one specific stat that you are looking for uh that i think would be a, a a better change on the the guild shop for the galactic shop um it's the same thing where like you're never gonna go for these elite heroes because res is just so much more better and a higher priority and then by the time you have res max you're no longer going to need any of these characters so i don't know I'd, I'd probably you could honestly just like remove all of these characters in here the elite characters and just have this hero rotate uh once you know once res is immortal um then make it a selector or something like that so you could choose between whether or not you want to keep on working on res copies or whatever heroes are the least um, the least owned by uh, other characters. So 
probably characters like Guan Yu or Moriyami or Prigo or something like that. Um, but yeah, only after Res is immortal. That way it'd be a little bit more balanced between uh, free to play and whale. So you can't just whale for that. And um, uh, I guess these are useful. This is not useful. So you could probably just remove that from the shop. Uh, these things, I've talked very much in depth about the Summit shop. It's different. This name of the sh this shop tab is different on different servers. So like this whole thing needs some rework for both the currency and the types of items offered here, and I'll cover that in a bit. So for the advanced guild shop, um, yeah, these gene modules are fairly useless. I don't know how many I have, but I have a lot. It's very unbalanced. So these items in here are fairly useless. This is fairly useless after two or three months. Um, like you, you no longer need these. This is the only item worth buying in here. And so the ratio between these gene modules and whatever these gene breakthrough items is very, it's, it's very off. The scale is very off. It should be uh, much lower on these and uh, a little bit like higher on this. I think I did some napkin math and it was like a year and a half or something for a new player to uh, max out their guild technology. Um, completing Guild Hunt 10. So higher will shorten the duration, lower will increase the duration. Something like that. I'll have to check the math. So that was all of the shop tabs. Uh, next we're gonna go to the recruitment tab. So for these exchange shops, like the, the current setup I think for this is fine. Um, it's, it's fairly balanced. Uh, the only issue is that when a new hero disappears from the banner exchange, then uh, that could be a problem for new players, uh, especially once, you know, uh, I guess the game keeps on progressing. So if, say from a year from now, uh, and you have whatever 100 SSS heroes, it's gonna be very difficult to obtain all of these types of heroes. So that could be something that could be addressed over time is um, maybe make selector cards in here as an option for like maybe say 150 or something. I don't know, just an additional option for the future. Uh, the basic exchange, th this is actually fairly okay, like you no longer need these types of um, shards uh, after two or three months, and for these it's the same thing, where you'll get most of these characters to immortal uh, after two to three months, even entirely free to play, so it's just getting them to I5 for the very few content, like these two have some use, uh, Liran has some use early game, Uka has some use end game, and that's about it, like, so it's, it's just... I'm not exactly sure what to do, but it, like basic for a basic data chip shop, like it, it's okay. It's 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 balanced. Uh, for the wish list, for the wish wish list. Oh my gosh, um, Aniruda is actually in here. Uh, and then as you reduce the characters in your wish list, this actually increases. However, I'd say the same thing for Res and the Galactic Shop. Um, that once you have Aniruda at Immortal make it uh, like a selector card or something like that, like a very small chance to get an SSS selector card. Um, that way it'll at least give players um, another chance of um, like choosing heroes or maybe even like a gene hybrid or something, it's just anything different. Uh, so for the friendship points, it's actually bugged. And uh, it's been brought up a couple of times. The max you're supposed to be able to get per day is 20, but I generally average 11. Um, and that I'm not exactly sure why that is, but when you send um, whatever for your receive and gift from the friends list, it like it really doesn't change anything here. Okay, so I actually got one from that. So I, that's one today. I've gotten one today. <laughs> so yeah, that needs to be looked into because I'm fairly certain that is not working. That's a very low priority though. Um, we already covered the missions tab. When you collect this, have an auto collect button. Um, let's see, events tab, yes, so this is important, there needs to be, so you have a 30 day login, and then you have like these types of events, quantum, return to giant tower, whatever, military expansion, um, when you, like, when players have these, these types of events in game, and you have this notice tab right here, there really needs to be an event calendar. So whether or not that's like an update, like this is coming next week or something, like a monthly calendar of like on this date, we're going to have um, like Giant's Tower. On this date, we're going to have Rise of Heroes. On like on this week, we're going to have 
Like, that really needs to be in the game, and I'm very surprised it hasn't been added into the game. Um, I do know that because of the way the schedule rotation is, every server basically has its own unique schedule, so it's kind of difficult to do that. But if you already have a cert like a, a, an event schedule rotation, and it shouldn't be difficult to code a calendar as well. So, yeah, uh, please insert an event calendar into that post. Um, for Twilight Lands, so let me show you this right here. Uh, Dread completed it on the first day, so did NCPD. Um, myself, Dan, DB, Rocco, Flurious, Stitch, NC Demon, Chalupa, Nar, we all completed it on the second day. So that's the top 11 spots completed on the second day. Um, if you look at the last resorts, like we had quite a few players uh, completed 11 spots. That's pretty much the same people as last time completed the top 11 spots um, within w within that same amount of time. So the ranking rewards are based on time. So if you don't have six hours to plug in um, into Twilight on the first day, then you can't get these top rewards. So I'm not exactly sure what is the best thing. The recent changes that um, were actually implemented were huge, and I'm deeply grateful for it. However, Twilight still takes quite a bit of time for end players, but it's a 14-day event, and players are completing it in one day. So that's kind of a feels-bad move. Um, so I would rather... Uh, I'm, I feel horrible for saying this, but I would rather have each... Uh, like each day unlock two chapters. So on the first day you have the first two chapters. On the second day you unlock the next two chapters. The third day the next two chapters. Kind of like that. Um, and then maybe you could do like three chapters or whatever on the like on like starting from the fifth day or something like that. Um, just so it's a little bit more spaced out and so players don't feel burned doing it. Um, just because it's a lot of content to do. Um, the other change I would recommend is for um, when you're doing the the ranking rewards, um, make it so it's based on progress. So maybe the, the top 10 rewards could s stay the same, but change it so it is the total amount of time um, for players get that tier of reward. So for example, if a player can clear Twilight in less than 10 hours or so, then they get the first place rewards. If they could clear it in less than 12 hours, then they get the second place rewards, uh, whatever, so on and so forth, um, up until the top 10 places. And then these whatever other top 100 places um, have this be a second tab. Because um, so, this right here, this... This is boss rewards. They're calling this boss rewards, but it's actually just ranking rewards. So have that be the boss rewards, is these top uh, whatever 10 to 100 places be boss rewards. So for all players that clear um, boss or chapter 15, they get these rewards. For all players that clear chapter 14, get these rewards, so on and so forth, all the way down. That I think would be a little bit better because right now it's just whoever has the most time and can complete Twilight the fastest gets this reward, so it's it's not fun in its current state. Um, not at all. The rewards, great. Um, the mechanics of the bond stages, great. It's just the, the manner in which the rewards are given is, is not very good at all. Uh, so that would be a, a very high priority uh, for changes as well. Um, let's go back and talk about Summit. So in the Arena tab, oh, I guess I have to click this, for this, I would prefer it if it would pop up at 3,000 or even 4,000. Currently, I think it's, it needs to be 5,000. So if I log in twice a day, um, 12 hours apart or 8 hours apart, uh, I'm unable to collect this. And so I end up hitting the 10K cap uh, twice a day. So if you check in three times a day and you manually check this, uh, then, then, you're, uh, then you're golden. But if not, then it doesn't really matter. Um, so for the Arena tab itself, um, what was I going to say? Um, right here, when you do battle reports, uh, nobody's actually attacked me, but when you have defensive victories, that should give, um, that should give points. Uh, there's actually a time, like a time limit on things. So after like 
20 or 40 seconds or so, the damage of everybody uh, increases. But it should be both damage increases and HP healing reduction decreases. Um, you need to have both or else you'll continue to have two minute timeouts. Um, and you could also just use a stall comp. Um, so this is both to prevent stall comps and to actually have benefits for choosing your battles carefully because currently uh, players could just attack and just keep attacking and there's no uh, I guess penalty for attacking. Um, for the galactic arena there really needs to be some sort of seasonal changes so whether or not it's um, certain types of heroes and factions are buffed um, specific types of heroes are banned like there needs to be something to change um, the in uh, um, galactic just just because it's it's kind of boring right now uh, the rewards for it are fairly good uh, I'm happy with the rewards it's most players could generally get um, in diamond um, after you know a couple of months or so it really just depends on their servers so I'm, I'm very happy with it right now, just some seasonal changes would be great. So for Summit itself, this it, it needs some huge changes, and um, it's been greatly discussed and talked about before in uh, Discord, and I'm actually going to pull up uh, some of the changes right now here. Um, I'm just going to slightly move this out of the way. All right, there we go. So we'll zoom in a little bit, and I'll just keep moving myself out of the way here. All right, so um, these are some of the proposed changes and really, really needs to help. So they did add an offensive and defensive team setup, and I don't think it was implemented like fully or correctly. Maybe the devs just ran out of time or whatever their engineers weren't able to implement any of these, but these types of changes really need to get added. Um, so like two extra attacks per prelims, an extra for group stage, um, the, Players can freely change their prototypes, cannot change their commanders, cannot change or remove the gear of characters. Um, they can have a sideboard of characters for these offensive and defensive teams. Uh, this is a very important one. Player name, guild name, lineup, uh, CP, whatever, all sorts of information needs to be hidden. This is a huge thing that uh, needs to be hidden. So I, I made an example here. Like Players could see who they are, like what their characters are, um, like, like this type of information, it needs to be hidden. Um, uh, let's keep going. Uh, the groupings are randomized for the display. Uh, rewards needs to be greater for all participants. So this is a very important one. Um, uh, I will move this back and showcase this r over here in, uh, the actual thing. So if you go to the shop, not the shop. Where is it? Uh, 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 rankings? Ah, uh, here we go. Rewards. Okay, so these rewards are, I mean, they're, they're okay rewards. A lot of people are going to pass the qualifiers, um, but, you know, the majority of people are not. It, it goes exponentially lower and lower for um, passing these types of qualifiers. So what I am have put in the proposed changes that the summit medals uh, they need to be increased in the amounts that are received so players need to get them for summit players need to get them for group stage rewards and players need to get them for qualifier stage rewards uh, however in order to offset that in the shop itself uh, these prices need to be increased and they need to be changed so for these instead of having select ones um, just add like group three of them together, or group two of them together, and make it a selector card. Uh, same for these types of heroes. It, like, they're nice, but just make them selector cards instead. Uh, for these types of rewards, like these are useless, these are useless, this is useless. This is okay, but it's just not as high as a priority as some of these other ones. Um, yeah, so, yeah, the reward system needs to be reworked as well. So let us go back to this over here and why is my blue stack still showing up okay there we go all right the schedule needs to be changed and let me go I just posted a very quick example like it's a two-week schedule in which players spend uh, like three minutes on the first day three minutes on the third day 
three minutes on you know the fifth day three minutes on the seventh day and that's pretty much it then you have if you make it to summit then you, you spend I don't know like a couple of minutes for setup and a couple of minutes for setup on the first day and then it's also three days to register as well so it's you it's another whatever two week event in which players are only spending like less than 10 10 to 30 minutes depending on how far you progress for it so it needs to be a little bit more interactive maybe shorten the duration or have it run twice and so maybe have it so like the top summit players um whatever there's like a like a secondary bracket or something so all the players who lost in the qualifier group and summit stages for the first time have a second chance uh in the second week so maybe make it two weeks or just make it occur more frequently something something needs to change for the schedule i'll let you guys decide um on that so for offensive changes um, prelims uh, players can choose whatever three spots per team to reveal plus their sideboard then for group stage they can only choose three spots per team and then for summit uh, that's its own thing defense is the same thing uh, once it's set up for prelims and groups you can't change it until the next defense stage and yeah so we'll go over here for so for summit there there were two different options that were discussed uh, discussed one is that uh, summit battles have two different phases for battle defense and offense uh, it has four teams of five with the sideboard of three characters for the offensive team. Um, players set up the defensive teams and then it can't be changed. Uh, same thing for the offensive teams. The defensive teams can be changed but only with the sideboard characters. Uh, players then get three attacks within that time frame so they get to pick and choose who they're attacking. And then it follows the standard total wins is greater than team wins is greater than time. So that would actually make it uh, summit more strategic because under the current um, uh, the, the current um, guidelines and setup it's it's just a matter of RNG it's whoever got the good lineup at the, la in the last 10 seconds uh, and whoever doesn't get like a timeout for um, the battles and there's there's quite a few bugs for summit as well um, where you'll set up a, a team for defensive and offensive and it won't save um, the commanders, the prototypes, the team layout itself, it won't save. Uh, there's another bug where um, if you are on here, actually, let me switch over to the Discord, not the Discord, to Blue Stacks. If you are in the summit, and if you are on the left side here, battling against the right side person, and in your match, you get a match timeout like this, the um, generally the like it if you watch the replay it, it really doesn't like um it doesn't match up with who wins or not like it, it really feels like it's uh completely rng so there's just a couple of things like that um okay going back here uh the second option for uh wait the second option for summit is that uh top 16 players are given time slots uh, players can vote on which time slot they want for their battle, and then the matchups occur between that time slot. And then the players can set up their teams within that time zone. They can view the enemy team, adjust the enemy team, battle starts, and then um, then the defense team for the group stage is used otherwise. So that would make it more of a, like a live action. It would probably be not very feasible under the current mechanics and the way the game engine is built for Summit, but just that would be very... It would be a good change. The other thing is... Um, creating a temporary data point uh, after the match has started. So any disconnects or weak signal losses will restore from this point. This is big because there are uh, a couple of m ways to exploit. Um, and so this would fix those exploits. And I won't talk about them, that. So that's pretty much it for the, su the summit suggestions. All of those should be added. There's a couple of other random small ones, um, but those do not need to be... Um, I guess they don't need to be talked about. Uh, so that's pretty much it for Summit. Let's continue going down here. So now we're in Perimeter. Um, so for Ancient Altar, it's kind of weird because right now, in order to maximize rewards, you actually don't want to k defeat it in one hit. You want to do a certain amount of damage uh, multiple times. So in add another mode. Uh, that's been a heavily requested change. Uh, the milestones are kind of weird and confusing for the way they're worded as well. Uh, so maybe a slight rework of that would help. And like the the record uh, for these, like they aren't, it's only showing 
like your records and I guess it's, it's it's still kind of bugged right now where it's not showing that um but yeah like this could be reworked as well uh that's pretty much it for ancient all or another tab um no okay I lied I looked at my notes and I did realize another thing if you are if you're able to uh one shot a boss and you've done it I don't know like 20 times or like 10 times or something like that um, add a way so that you can sweep it in one hit um, but in order for that to be implemented this challenge rewards needs to be changed so either increase the difference so add each tier so if you only do this much double it so it's this tier is doubled like this tier is doubled this tier is doubled but then you could also lower the rewards here um, so say only one, one, and like a hundred or something like that. But by the end, then it'll be whatever four, four, and like four fifty or something like that. That would be a little bit more balanced. Um, <clears throat> yeah. For yeah, okay. I think that's pretty much it for altar. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. So for these right here, um, once you've already completed it. Um, I think that after you have already gotten all three of these ticket challenges or you have um, completed and spent like 2,000 stamina or something, add the, the ability to auto sweep, like another button here or something like that. Just so you don't have to, you know, just go through and do that. So you could challenge or whatever and you have this screen pop up and you choose however many you want. Um, make that make that pop up after you've done whatever 2,000 spent 2,000 stamina in here or you've completed all of these I'll you know I'll leave it up to you um, and that'll be the same for all of these um, so for Disa caves uh, you need to remove these mythic equipment from at least the last three <coughs> um, because right here it changes from 1 to 2. If you actually look at the clear rewards, you have a possibility of getting 2 equipment drops. But these need to be removed. Um, there's there's no use for them, um, even as fodder gear, especially for the last stages. Uh, just n instead have have it be legendary equipment. I think that would be a, f a fine change there. Uh, I don't think these rewards needed to change. I think this was fine. Um, yeah, I think this was fine, probably for maybe like 14 or 15, because I I want to say the rewards are just like slightly different, um, but the, the ticket chances don't change, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, the ticket chances don't change for like 13, 14, and 15. Um, so instead of that, um, increase the chance for like SSS commanders to drop, or add a way to select which type of SS commander you want a slightly higher priority for. Um, I think that would be a, a fun little change for Marsh. Uh, for the Terra Dome, uh, same thing, whatever, after 2000s, add the auto sweep. But this Epic Divine prototypes drops, uh, there's again no change between the ticket chances for 13, 14, and 15. So there's, there's really like not much difference um, between them. Uh, in doing it. So if you could clear 15, uh, there's like you might as well do 14 because there's no difference. The only thing I would add is if you have uh, 14 or 15, um, add like slightly, just slightly increase the chance for Vision Stone and uh, Red Thorn. Just very, very slightly. Uh, yeah, that would help greatly. And then for all three of these, I just, we're, just, we're just waiting for the next, whatever, five stages or so. Um, for this Ketosian triangle, I think this is fine how it is right now. Um, you already know my thoughts on this boss. We've already talked about that, so players will will see it uh, once it comes out tomorrow. Um, for Crimson Abyss, uh, I think it's fine as well. It's, it is fairly difficult, so it does give something um, players to work towards. Uh, it should be the same thing, though. Uh, so for this, once a player has spent, I don't know, like 200 stamina or so in here, then allow the ability to auto-complete the whatever their highest stage, uh, where they have all of these 
or maybe just even the highest stage. Um, I guess for the um, Keresian Triangle stages, maybe after you know 200, 200 tickets, or maybe even 300 tickets, since it's a little bit more here, um, 300 for here, 400 for here, then add the ability to auto sweep. I think that would be a very good change. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. What else? What else? I think Soul Mine is probably okay. Um, I had some suggestions for it before, but now I can't remember. It'll probably increase the ranking here. Um, it would be nice if you could scroll um, back so you could see where other players are and then have like a name icon like Karatha is here or like your friend so-and-so is here or something like that. I think that would be a very nice quality of life change and the ability to see what past rewards are and what future rewards are as well. Um, those are, I guess, all some changes that I would like to see for every single one of these floors. Um, and then have the same thing, like, here I could see them because it's part of the peak of glory, but I can't see it for the other faction mine. So, same types of changes here. Um, I'd also like to be able to see uh, what teams uh, players used for that floor. Um, at least, like, three, three players' teams or something. That would be a huge quality of life change for these. Um, let's see, let's see. So for Wasteland, I greatly enjoyed the sweep all button change that has occurred. However, there is something that is not included, which is these event tabs or event nodes that you used to be able to get, you can no longer get rewards for using the sweep all function. So I would add all of the event tabs to the pool and then make it like a, I don't know, 10, 20, 25, 30% chance that for each one of these um, event node tabs that you would have had, um, just have it have a percent chance to also occur here in the sweep thing. Um, I think you're missing like 500 diamonds is, is probably the largest thing you're missing from here, as well as um, wasteland po pass point or wasteland coin currency. And then there's like a couple of elite hero shards and some rare hero shards or something like that. Um, so just those kinds of like add that and I think that'll be fine as uh, you know a slight tweak to here but other than that very happy with the changes for Wasteland um, I had already submitted some other changes in which Wasteland was completely reworked and I would still prefer to see Wasteland reworked um, and uh, remove the need for a sweep button um, yeah uh, Rift Fissures are fine I, I really do not like doing puzzles in games but a lot of players really like that so i think just continue maybe like one per month would be a nice change to have uh currently it's like one every two months or so now uh da -da, soul mine rise of heroes is fine ancient alder twilight okay we already talked about all of the things here uh elite campaign so for the team requirements it says number of heroes killed is lower than one um, that's kind of confusing. We go to another one. Number of heroes killed is lower than two. Let's keep going here. And, uh, let's see. Number of hero killed is lower than three. This needs to be changed, uh, in my opinion. It's, it's kind of confusing. And, um, it should just say, like, like zero hero deaths or something like that. One hero death. Two hero deaths. Um, that's, that's the type of things that need to be here. Uh, these clear reward changes are very, very nice. Uh, the collect hero shards, it, it really, instead of going here, collect, and then sweeping each one, it should just be right here. Sweep, and then however many you have unlocked, have that be um, the maximum amount I could use. So, say I have nine here, change this to a sweep button, so sweep, and then I have the selector with zero through nine or something like that. That would be a nice minor thing so i remove one two uh, so i remove you know a couple a couple more clicks or taps um for that um other than that uh like one hero shard for these is probably of too small of amount um now that it has been changed um it's like it's a little bit better in the sense that once you're capped and can no longer progress, you could choose any one of these to get shards for. However, by the time you get capped and you can uh, and you can no longer progress, 
um, after you know a week or a week basis, you no longer need any of these heroes. Uh, right now, I'm just working on I5 for very like just a couple more heroes. So it's it's where it's the amount of shards you get is too small for the time that you need it. So by the time that you need to farm for a specific hero shard, you no longer need that hero shard. So I'm not exactly sure what to say. Maybe double the amount of shards to make it two shards instead of one. Or maybe um, higher chapters give more shards or something like that. Just any any slight change for it um, would be nice. And then, um, I don't know, maybe you could make it like like a specific hero shard so instead of it giving like a specific hero you could have a like a currency changer or something but that would be more of a bag item i guess for shards is uh where's my serena i swear i had a bunch of serena oh uh, no i didn't have a bunch of serena i swear i had oh kalaza i am blind so kalaza like i have 460 shards which is quite a bit of hero copies from this but being able to change these into elite hero shards and then from elite hero shards onto like a hero selector shard um so i can choose what specific elite hero i want so say like two of these equals one of the specific selector hero shards or something like that or like some kind of conversion ratio um that would be great and then like maybe i could convert the elite hero selector shard into uh you know like a this type of sss hero selection shard that would be a nice thing um, the event pop-ups we talked about, mail, we talked about balance patches. Okay, so this is a very high priority item. Uh, what should I go through? So tanks. Tanks are, I, they aren't, it's not that they're the weakest class in the game, it's just that they are the least useful class in the game. Uh, Oak is okay in the beginning of the game, Oisa every, most players will have in the beginning of the game, uh, and Boar is it's okay during um, PvP, and uh, that's pretty much it. But ninety nine for ninety nine percent of content, I will never use a tank. Um, the exceptions for that are in elite campaign. That's pretty much my only use for tanks right now is an elite campaign, uh, low tier, like very low level new player stuff. That's when I use tanks. So there really needs to be, at least once a month, there needs to be some sort of balance pass. And this has been talked about before, um, and there's several ways to do this. A lot of game companies like to say, all right, uh, um, let's see, like Langle. Like, Langle is a weak character. Uh, whatever, his skills are weak, his base stats are weak, like whatever his, um, his uh, what's it called, his damage percentages or stuff are weak, like, and mine is bunged right bugged right now but like everything about him is just very poor um and so it's also the same thing for very strong heroes like uh leo for example uh you have a very strong hero where uh they'll, they'll get slightly nerfed so they'll nerf a hero a strong hero and then they will buff a weak hero um however that's not the the best way to do it the best way i have had in my experience is to just do an overall balance patch so if Vanguard are too strong, what you do is, in order to slightly reduce the baseline of whatever that one strong hero, is to do general changes. So s reduce the Vanguard base HP by like 2% or something like that. Increase the, the base HP of uh, tanks by like 3% or 4% or something like that. Um, whatever. Reduce the damage of like all energy heroes whatever by like five percent or something like for healers like uh decrease their hp by five percent just something like that and when you're doing uh, specific balance passes for the percentages just slightly tweak the percentages so if she heals for whatever 240 percent change it to like 235 or 250 or something like that like do minor things but for all of the types of heroes in that class or that role uh, at the same time that is a far better way of um of doing balance passes so you have a lot of characters like uh like murphyro i have never used my entire life langle i've never used um the entire time who else have i not used i have never used orn i have never used uh, uh that's pretty much about it i've used 
a lot of characters at least once have used Paluna once. I've used Hercules a couple of times. I've used Kuite a couple of times. I've never used Karma. Like, there's just these characters that, you know, there, there's no use for them. Um, and I really like how you could do a lot of things with characters, but focusing too heavily on one faction, one thing, like, there was a lot of effort put into summons, and it really doesn't need to be that way. Um, it's better to do, like, one, 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 one or so, or, like, do a general balance pass. Um, hero release frequency. So, an SSS hero every two weeks is way too fast. Way too fast. Uh, Free-to-play cannot keep up with that. Uh, and then, for whales, they could still max... They could completely max it on the first day. And so, like, even if you are releasing a new hero, like, every two weeks, that isn't a fine balance. So, it's... I have proposed in the past, lots of players have proposed in the past, that you do one SS hero per month. And then, so you rotate it. So every two weeks is whatever SSS hero. The next two weeks, you do an elite hero. Uh, that way, you're still getting a new hero every two weeks. Um, but it's it's slightly more balanced that way. Um, it's also because it takes uh, free-to-play. It's like two to three months to be able to get the EX runes um, to be able to... Uh, get their exclusive to E30. So one they free to play could do one new hero every two to three months on average. Um, so if you're releasing a new hero every two weeks, you know after four or five months, players are going to have half of their roster, more than half their roster is going to be heroes that they won't be able to use because a new hero would be released and it'll be better than the first whatever the old heroes and then they they won't ever be able to progress with any of the new heroes again. So it's kind of like a, a never-ending cycle for there needs to be some sort of balance for that. Uh, but we do still want the content for uh, heroes. Um, for Wasteland Pass, uh, let's see, Wasteland Pass. So this, you 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 max out the rewards on, um, what's it called, with two weeks left. It's like a month-long month, month long pass, and you you have two weeks of just wasted wasted time. So either increase the duration by another two weeks or, like, just, like, lesser rewards or something like that. Like, have these rewards. Just something. It needs to be longer. Um, a training dummy. There needs to be some sort of mode here, like training dummy right here, where I could go in and I could test my own heroes, or I could use... Certain types of heroes, like if I want to s click and say, like, okay, select Ravenna, uh, select whatever surge gear set, like, select, like, attacks or whatever, so you could see how certain types of characters will perform in certain types of situations. That would be a very, very nice addition to have um, to the game here. So, whoop, I just scrolled the wrong thing. Um, when you're in battle, there's a couple of things that... Uh, are very annoying. So I go through and I start my battle and I have my details uh, tabs set here. Oh, wait, so I some damage. I push the pause button. This bar right here cuts out the screen. It is very annoying. So in order to take screenshots, I need to unpause, take a screenshot, and then repause it. Um, this usually happens when you're testing things, but um, you just need to cut off the box so it's a square here or something like that or just m make it so it's a more of a rectangular box or something because being able to see this type of uh, tab is, is very important information. Um, the other thing is when you um, are in twilight and you have everything set to off, you go to the next stage and then all of the characters are set to auto again. Just have it stay. Um, whatever you had selected in the previous battle have that be saved and it's the same thing when i click here and i retry then it's reset and so it's a it's a race to go through and um select it and then i have to click pause or i have to click auto and then i have to reselect and change this over and over again so that kind of change in these types of auto combat battle situations is very very annoying it's an additional you know five to ten seconds every battle um the shield display, so when my Leo has any sort of shield value or something, right there, that small bar for shields, 
is very, very dif difficult to see. Uh, and I don't quite like it. Um, I would prefer it if it was back to the original thing where I had a secondary shield bar. Um, it could be the same type of uh, ranges as I guess as it currently is. So if it's only a small percentage of your HP, then you know keep it that way. Uh, another thing I would like to see is I would like in the options menu um, to be able to have the ability to see um, what is it? So the ability to have additional sorts of um, like battle settings. Uh, when I'm in a battle. So for me, I personally like seeing the percentages of my heroes. So being able to see like whatever 98% or whatever Leo's at 40% or 50%, like being able to see that either here or above the heroes themselves is um, that's something I personally would like to be able to toggle on or off. Um, and yeah, that would help greatly. Um, so another thing is when you have auto battle turned on, my hero is going to heal like this. They're going to center the AoE on the the whatever the target is. Uh, same for Anaruda, uh Same for Daniel. Daniel is going to do whatever the closest. So he's going to go like this. He's going to hit his AoE right here. It should target whatever would be the most possible uh, targets uh, for auto battle. So for whatever Daniel, that would be here. For Masrani, that would be like like so. That should be what the auto defense is. So that would be a huge quality of life change. Uh, the other thing is when I am uh, when I have completed a battle, I guess I'll have to um, I'll just have to let this die out. And I'll turn Leo off, and I'll just talk while doing this. Is um, we need to be able to see additional battle details for uh, not only the offensive stats, the defensive stats, and the damage stats. So if my Maserani is healing for 9 million, I need to be able to go here into the detailed battle stats and have a second tab or something where I can toggle like advanced battle details and it shows me from Maserani's skill 1 or his ultimate, uh, he healed this amount like from his skill 1 or his second skill he healed this amount from his passive he healed this amount or whatever like being able to see that kind of information. Uh, another type of information I'd like to be able to see is Masrani used his ultimate eight times during that battle, or five times during that battle. Um, if I'm taking damage, I want to see how much damage he took from who. Uh, this is especially true in PvP. So if my, like, say I'm Leo versus Leo, I want to see how much damage I took from the Leo or tanked, uh, or, or from, like, other types of characters. Um... Uh, same thing for the events, offensive stats. I want to see how much damage each of the skills used, um, how like how often they were used, uh, that kind of information. So that's very important. Another thing is when you reach the defense, the defeat screen here, there is no redo button. Where is my try again button? There needs to be a try again button. So instead, I have to go all the way back, and then I have to go challenge again, and then challenge again. That's just very annoying. Uh, for the formation stages. Um, they've already talked about how there's going to be additional formation options where you could change the name and um, you could uh, edit it during battle and those types of things. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, that's most of the big changes uh, in the battle s stages and selections. Um, I'd like to be able to have more filter options here so I could toggle on um, SSS, SS, um, same thing for here. There needs to be more toggle options. I need to be able to toggle on SSS versus Elite. I need to be able to toggle off duplicates. No more duplicates. Um, like this. This screen should not be here. Just make this the standard, um, the default. That would be a, a great help as well. Uh, da -da -da -da. There, I feel like there's something else I'm missing. Ah, yes. Something very important. So for these, I have talked about before, it needs to have skill tags on here. So this needs to say whatever, like, uh, single target, displacement, um, like, buff, or, like, there just needs to be different types of, um, different types of tags on here. So you could do, like, uh, offensive skill, defensive skill, healing, healing over time, damage over time, AoE, single target, 
line, column, uh, displacement, uh, buff, self buff, uh, debuff, like those types of tags we need to see on here underneath it. Um, there also needs to be like a cooldown somewhere on here. So say it's like a whatever 10 second cooldown, it needs to be displayed on here somewhere. Um, and then what was something else that needs to be on here? Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, I, I can't remember, but um, yeah, so th those types of things need to be seen on here. Uh, they're, they're very important information that is missing from here, and it just needs to be added. Uh, for the equipment screen, we've already talked about it. There just needs to be better and more filtering options. Uh, skins is not important. Ah, talents. So for talents, there needs to be uh, add all. So say I add whatever, I could add talents, and it'll automatically fill as, as far as possible. Um, and have it prioritize skills and then from right to right to left uh, as far as possible um, so say that'll be like it'll you have like option one is like one 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 or something like that so main path and skill items only you have a second option is just like fill all and then you have a third option which is just like one of everything uh, and then yeah, so like those types of three options would be great. Um, another thing is, um, once this is activated or something, I need to be able to click it and like remove, or remove all. Or when I'm clicking on something, instead of activating, I need to activate all. Um, those those types of things are going to be very useful. Uh, so I could fill all, and then I could remove like, okay, like my Serena does not need crit damage. My Serena does not need attack. So I could like remove those as needed. Um, yeah, that would be a very, very nice, uh, quality life change to have. Uh, as far as store packs go, um, for the value packs, it has been suggested that there be some sort of player selection choice thing. So for weekly and monthly, you have whatever, a pack for, instead of like these types of options, because a lot of these packs, um, aren't very useful. Um, so instead of having like these types of things, have it be like a $10 selector, like a $30 selector, whatever, a $50 and a hundred dollar selector. So that way players can see what types of packs are, uh, and what types of items. And that'll help you as the devs help balance the economy because then you see what types of items are needed in the game as well. And that just helps with, uh, yeah, economy. So that's pretty much about it. Uh, 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 I think that's pretty much everything I'm going to go over at this time. Uh, let me know in the comments if I'm missing anything. I know this was a very long video, but it was very important uh, to be able to have. Uh, I guess one other final minor thing here is when I'm leveling up, it only shows me the ability to uh, use Rubelite packages. I'd also like to be able to see the resource packs in here. Um, as well um uh, if i could find them in my bag i think i already used all of mine yeah but any of the the packs that give both xp rubelite and gold uh that should show up as an option in uh, leveling up heroes as well so yeah that's pretty much about it i'm looking forward to the gear set uh being able to set up custom equipment for uh, characters I think is going to be that's going to be a huge change. Um, this recommended equ equipment, like I have no idea, like what, what, like all of this is like. Yeah, I don't know about all of this information. It would be great if instead of this, um, that it shows like player recommendations as well. Or if I click it, I could see from here what players are. Um, what players have equipped like that would be a very nice um, change um, another thing is this the hero stats right in here like it, we need to know like more of where the hero stats come from and yes as well as um, when I'm clicking on uh, let's say Luke for example and I go to the main stats here like the stat info is is okay um, but we need to be able to know like where everything comes from 
So instead of it being this huge long box to nothingness, have it be like white value, like green value, purple value, uh, like blue, yellow, orange, whatever. And then above each of them have different types of columns. So say base stats, um, say like guild stats, uh, talent, um, gear, um, what other types of things like gear sets, like have all of that be calculated here and then have this be the total here. That would be a huge change. Um, and, and yeah, that would be a huge change that we would like to see. And then I guess it's already been talked about before, but when you have very specific types of um, um, percentages that are not discussed in game, uh, modified by right here, enemies damage by seal of 50% base chance modified by uh, accuracy. Players do not know what this modified by accuracy is. So we could test it for ourselves, but like there should be some way to figure out this kind of information, whether it's in the strategy for this hero or something like there needs to be some sort of way to have that be known to players. All right, now I'm going to wrap up because I'm tired of talking. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, please uh, leave a like, uh, comments on what else you'd like to see added to the game, any other quality of life features uh, you'd like to see changed, and uh, look forward to seeing y'all in the next video.